Okay, um, so thanks from the Galaxy Developer Roundtable. Uh, this week, uh, the I guess the GPU team here at Penn State um, are going to talk about GPUs and Galaxy. Um, I, I, I'm excited to see what the conversation looks like. Um, so I'll just hand it off to you, you two. You want to introduce yourself and what you're doing and take it away? Hi, everyone. So uh, I'm Tashwant here. I'm a PhD student at uh, Penn State, where I work on cloud computing under my advisors, Dr. Kandenberg and Dr. Das. And uh, Dr. Anton, as well, is in my PhD committee. And uh, so myself and another uh, junior PhD student, Coulson, we've been working on an interesting uh, project, which is about uh, uh, bringing in GPU support into the Galaxy environment so that we can accelerate the tools which already have GPU capabilities, but when they are going to be running in Galaxy, we are trying to accelerate them by bringing GPU awareness. So both of us will be presenting the work which we have done so far and the uh, progress we have made on that front. And uh, uh, so let me start off with my presentation. Kulsum, can you actually share the screen for the slides? Sure. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. yep. Okay. So, uh, so as I said, we've been doing this work, which is uh, accelerating bioinformatics tools in Galaxy. So, currently, uh, we have written a workshop paper out of this, which has been published in High Comp. I mean, it got accepted and it's going to be published actually soon. So, uh, so, uh, so I'm going to be talking about the work we did on that. Can you go to the next slide? So as we all know that Galaxy is a very widely used, you know, software framework to, to, uh, to run a wide variety of applications ranging from computational chemistry to genomic sequencing to bioinformatics and whatnot, right? So uh, one of the key, uh, applications which benefit from Galaxy would be, uh, I'm going to go to the next slide, would be, uh, you know, uh, the genomic sequencing and, you know, drug discovery or vaccine discovery based applications. And for example, even with COVID-19 right now, I think a lot of uh, the sequencing and uh, vaccine discovery has been accelerated by uh, using uh, software frameworks like Galaxy for running their experiments. So it is extremely important for a wide range and especially speeding uh, you know speeding up the application just one sorry um, oh, can i interrupt you you don't need to convince anybody here that it's important okay. just let's just get let's get to the point because this yeah, way that's we'll, gonna we'll have more time slide. for discussion yes yes that's going to start off right in the next slide so i'm going to go to the next slide so as we all know that you know accelerating these applications is important the most uh, the one of the key playing factors here are, you know, the compute infrastructure, which is graphics processing units. So with GPU support, these applications can run a lot more faster. So what we are trying to do in this work is, uh, we'll go to the next slide. So uh, here, what we, try to, what we try to do is the current Galaxy software infrastructure, it doesn't have the capability to, uh, to run in a GPU infrastructure, where though the tools do have support to run in GPUs on a bare metal environment, but if I'm going to be running them via Galaxy, then they can't be run on a GPU setup. So, and uh, from prior research, we know that GPUs can give you a lot of speed up for some of the example applications I've shown here. So what we do in our proposed design is to, uh, so can I go to the next slide? Is uh, we, are, we are trying to make Galaxy GPU aware. So what we try to do here is we try to make use of the existing plugins within Galaxy itself, wherein uh, Galaxy can know about GPUs which are there in a cluster. Further, we also try to, you know, how uh, Galaxy would behave when there are multiple GPUs in the cluster. How is it going to handle the scheduling and, uh, and you know, running, uh, running the applications on that front? 
of course galaxy is not run in a standalone mode it is it is typically run in a cluster with a cluster scheduler but in this work we have focused on the local runner execution of galaxy to see how it can be made keep you aware and we'll be focusing more on that and we do have an upcoming work going on to see how galaxy interacting with a cluster scheduler like a hpc scheduler and then how gpu availability uh, is going to play a role there so uh, now i'm going to leave the floor to kulsum who has been working predominantly on the engineering aspects of how we uh, brought in gpu awareness so kulsum you can start off right from the next slide Hi everybody. Uh, so uh, most probably most of you know the overall system flow of how to run a tool on Galaxy. So uh, what the end user does is they uh, press execute on the web UI and then a job configuration uh, XML file is used in order to uh, expose Galaxy to which destinations to use. Then either a user can specify a script to map the destinations or there can be readily available destinations. Later, uh, at this point, we introduce a new destination mapper which maps the jobs from GP, uh, to GPU or CPU depending on some conditions. Then from this script, what we did was we exposed an environment variable which is used throughout the uh, uh, system flow and uh, it is used both in the local runner later it is used in uh, other files like evaluation.py which actually uh, assemble a command line um, co a command to execute the uh, tools and then later that environment variable is exposed to a tool wrapper and from this tool wrapper a tool developer can actually use the value of this uh, Galaxy uh, GPU enabled environment variable and that they can allow the Galaxy to choose between a CPU executable or a GPU executable depending on the availability. So here we had uh, introduced several challenges and uh, our first challenge is how can a user, uh, a tool developer, tell to Galaxy that their tool requires a GPU. So to do this, we introduced a new uh, uh, requirement type of compute in which uh, its value can be GPU or CPU. Later, using this uh, information, we have another challenge. How are we going to expose this uh, GPU availability to the Galaxy runner? So to, do, to solve this challenge, we actually uh, implemented this uh, CPU-GPU mapping script, uh, which again, as I said, introduces the environment variable. So here, our script, uh, what it does is it, um, it learns, it understands the GPU availability on the infrastructure that our Galaxy instance is running. So um, what it does, it also gets the requirements from the tool that is to be executed, and depending on the requirement and the infrastructure availability, it exposes the environment variable. Later, uh, our next challenge will be implementing this for containerized uh, GPU tools. To do this, uh, we added some small additions to the readily available Docker util and Singularity util files. And uh, what these do is, um, they allow NVIDIA Docker to be executed. Our last challenge is, uh, which is challenge four, uh, how to implement this on a multi-GPU setting because some of the tools are embarrassingly parallel and they can benefit from multi-GPU infrastructure. So in order to, uh, in order to solve this challenge, we actually um, enabled the multi-GPU computation mapping support which allows the user to specify the IDs of the GPUs, not only the GPU requirement, and then uh, it allows us to obtain real-time GPU information in order to uh, design a allocation strategy to multi-GPU uh, aware setting. Sorry, I can't. Um... 
change the slide. So first I will explain how we are specifying the new requirement type. So this is, uh, re uh, so I will go through the example of Recon GPU tool in this uh, presentation. Uh, so here uh, we have the macros.xml file, which is uh, imported from the tool XML file, Recon XML file. And here you're seeing that now we have a new requirement type of compute and the value can be GPU or it can be CPU too. So what this does is it allows the allows Galaxy to recognize the, that the tool requires the GPU. Next, we have the I will explain how we are creating the environment variable. So here we have the destinations.py script that we wrote, and uh, here uh, first our Galaxy GPU enabled environment variable is false. Then we get the requirement. Uh, value and the GPU count. So if we have more than one, more than zero GPUs, and if we have the requirement, we make it true. Next, uh, this is the job comp file. It just shows that we're using our dynamic mapper in the job configuration. <clears throat> now uh, I will explain how we are exposing the new environment variable to uh, to the tool wrapper. So you can't just uh, use OS uh, like environment variables from within the tool um, XML, the wrapper file. So what we did is we found this uh, build param dictionary uh, function uh, in evaluation.py script. And then uh, we added this uh, addition where we just get the, um, get the environment variables value from the Python uh, implementation. And we create a parameter dictionary entry for the tool. So uh, we can just access the parameter dictionary entry like this from the uh, tool wrapper file. And if this is true, we will use the GPU executable of the tool. Otherwise, we will use a CPU executable. So this is a sample execution of our Galaxy. Uh, so here uh, we were using a GPU. Um, GPU uh, infrastructure node, and uh, we had both GPU and <laughs> CPU versions of the tool, uh, the executables of the tool. And uh, we used the tool wrapper that I showed you in the previous slide. And then when we executed it, uh, Galaxy uh, found out that it needs to run the GPU executable, and this is the result of it. So as you can see here, it is using the Recon GPU uh, executable. <clears throat> Our environment variable also can be used to expose uh, selectively the parameters of a tool because, for example, Recon GPU tool has uh, the <clears throat> extra parameters that it's, uh, it's used in GPU version. So you can just use the uh, parameter dictionary uh, entry in order to choose which parameters you want to uh, exposed to. So uh, this is just a short slide on how we added uh, the this support to Docker and Singularity tool. Uh, so I think let us maybe give a pause here to know if uh, you know the audience were able to follow or if they have any clarifications to make. Uh, yeah. Uh, does anybody have any uh, questions or clarifications? Um, I, I just a, a real quick thought was that um, I, I think you found the right places in the code to modify the um, basically the the parameters you're sending to the tool. It, it might be it might be good to do that um, with like job configuration parameters though, like things in job comp, right? Because you can imagine uh, like a heterogeneous mm -hmm. system where some of your nodes have GPU enabled and some of them don't. And so just using a single environment variable that, that sort of runs within the galaxy. Uh, I can't hear. Yeah, Ivan, I think I lost said. his audio. The only concern so far, um, but otherwise it seems like you, you've created an abstraction for getting it to the tool well, and I think that's great. John, I think we missed you for a few seconds. So yeah. yes, like in the I'm sorry, I'm on like a, a new Chromebook, and it's it's terrible. <laughs> I, 
Okay. I, I'll just retract my comment. I, I'll take things offline. I, I apologize. No, so I agree with John. So if you look at the job conf XML dot sample ex, ex, uh, advanced example, you can see how you can define parameters for the job runners themselves. And that's probably where it should be defined. Right, John? Okay. Um, yes. Yeah. But after okay. that point, everything looks great. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. We can discuss it with you uh, later also. Uh, about like how to fix it uh, because uh, we actually what we did was we learned the galaxy uh, implementation ourselves so it can be sometimes it may not be very suitable to what the developers has been doing so we can adapt it and we can change yes, our implementation yeah. to what's the proper way um, we'll be able to go on then Okay, so now I will explain how to do the support to Docker and Singularity containerized tools. Actually, this was one of the easiest parts because uh, as long as we have our environment variable, we just check its value and then we actually just append a new flag to the build docker run command and build singularity run command. So they are very both very similar and uh, what they do is, so if you have NVIDIA Docker installed on your infrastructure, this is a requirement for this to work. Then if you just add this uh, GPUs all or selectively select GPUs like GPUs one or anything like that, uh, you will be exposing the GPU hardware and GPU drivers to, uh, to your containerized tool. So these two flags allow us to add the Docker and Singularity support to the GPU uh, functionality that we're adding. So we just tested this um, by creating a, a Raycon GPU container and it can be uh, accessed from this uh, Docker Hub uh, link repository. And uh, from this Raycon Docker file uh, image, uh, it's actually Recon GPU image. Uh, we use Docker to Singularity tool, which is an open source uh, converter tool to convert a Docker container to Singularity container easily. And then we created our Singularity image from Docker image. And later we tested our Recon GPU to evaluate it and it worked uh, as intended. So uh, we evaluated our uh, support uh, with a node that has two NVIDIA Tesla K80 GPUs uh, and 32 warp size, which means 32 threads are executed at once in the GPU. And we used CUDA 10.2 and Python 3.6.9 at the time we uh, tested this. And this is just the hardware architecture um, that we used. So uh, now I will explain uh, what improvements we got. So um, we actually uh, got very good benefits of using uh, uh, GPU tools from Galaxy. And um, for Graycon GPU tool, we got uh, almost 2x speed up for local and containerized execution uh, compared to the CPU only version uh, by running it from Galaxy. So we actually saw that our support doesn't have any extra overheads, which is the, which is what we want. And later, um, we also uh, wanted to analyze why are we uh, getting these speed ups. So here uh, we tested a uh, break on with 17 GB uh, data set, which is the Alzheimer data set. And we actually profiled our um, tool from within uh, Galaxy and we understood why we cannot get more speed up. So actually uh, it was reasonable because we have some extra API calls that are associated with GPU tools. So this shows that um, these extra um, API calls, the transfer of uh, data from memory, uh, from CPU to GPU, then back to GPU to CPU actually explains our speed up reasons. Later, we wanted to test another uh, famous tool, uh, which was Bonito. Uh, maybe most of you know, so I want to ask how many people know about Bonito and how many don't, so I can maybe do it shorter or longer. I, 
I don't know anything about Bunny Hill. Okay, then I will explain it more in detail. So, uh, as we all know, Oxford uh, Nanopore Technologies, it is a famous new technology that uh, can generate longer sequencing reads than next generation, next generation sequencing. So uh, now I will explain what base calling is in one sentence. So base calling translates the original electrical signals that are coming from raw uh, data uh, from the sequencing sequencer to the nucleotide sequence. So what Bonito does is it uses a deep neural network in order to base call the reads uh, easily. And uh, Bonito's DNN architecture is composed of convolutional layer uh, followed by uh, three stacked bidirectional gated recurrent unit layers, GRU layers. So uh, what Bonito does is it uses PyTorch in order to execute this neural network. So it is one of the most uh, suitable uh, applications that we would want to test our support because it both uses GPU, it has CPU version, GPU version, it has neural networks, which is which are becoming very frequently used, and it is a very recent tool and it is frequently used. So uh, we also did some experimental res results for Bonito. So we used um, two data sets. Uh, one of them is larger than the other, like five five x larger, and we compared CPU and GPU executions. As you uh, as you can see. We had almost 50x speed up with both of the data sets using GPU version of Bonito. And here we also profiled uh, Bonito. And um, as we can see, we still have some overheads uh, because of GPU. However, the speed up that we're getting is much more dominating the, these overheads. So the speed up reason can be attributed more to, you know, they, they're using a deep neural network and generally TNNs are more embarrassingly parallel when running GPUs. So you get a lot more speed up when compared to Raycon. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and uh, next I will explain the multi GPU support, which is, uh, I think one of the most interesting parts of our, um, uh, functionality. So for multi-GPU support, we need several information from the infrastructure. So we get this information using our get GPU usage function, which resides in the local.py script. So this function captures the executing processes from each GPU, and it returns a list of available GPUs and all of the GPUs in the system. So here uh, to uh, implement this, we use the NVIDIA SMI query. And in this query, you can query the GPU with several attributes. So it's not shown here, but uh, we query the GPU with the process info and et cetera. So then uh, we use a beautiful SOOF in order to process the XML that we're getting from the NVIDIA SMI query more easily. And uh, then from that, we found all the uh, we found all the processes and the process info. So here, uh, we what we did was we processed this and we just returned the available GPUs, where the available GPU is a GPU in which no process is running on it. So this was our first approach, and a second up. Uh, yeah, I will actually explain that later, but this was the approach that we return available GPUs. So when you're running a new tool, it will allocate uh, an available G uh, GPU to that tool. Next, we have the command line function, which resides in the local uh, Py script, as we all know. And uh, here we, <clears throat> We did the check again. We checked if the uh, tool requires a GPU, and we added. We used another uh, XML tag that is already available in Galaxy instead of adding a new one. So, as we all know, there is a version tag for for tool requirements. Normally, it is used for for software library version. However, we wanted to reuse that, and we actually use that for allowing a uh, 
user to specify which GPU devices they want to run their tool on. So using the requirement version and requirement type, we actually uh, save the GPU ID that the user wants to use. And then we check if that GPU is available. If that is available, that's good. We just allocate that GPU to the user. However, if it is not available, the tool still has to be run. So what we do is we allocate one of the available GPUs to the tool. So <clears throat> this availability definition will change in the future and I will explain that also. So here uh, we have four cases of experiments that we made to actually test our support. So uh, first one is, okay, I have two tool instances. I want to run both of them at the same time. Raycon wants GPU zero and Bonito wants GPU one. So if we run this, it works as uh, intended and Raycon is allocated to GPU zero and one. So this is base case. Later, we have uh, two instances of the same tool. So we all we know that Bonito wants GPU zero. However, uh, GPU one, sorry. However, uh, if I execute one instance of Bonito, it's running on GPU one. So GPU one is not available anymore. Next, if we start another instance of Bonito, then it will be allocated to GPU zero because GPU one is not available. This allows us better allocation because if you schedule both of them to the same GPU, then there will be context switches and you will not get uh, the best performance you are intended to. Next, uh, we have, we tried four instances of the same tool on a two GPU machine. So there's an overflow, obviously. And first, uh, Raycon is allocated to GPU zero and another instance is allocated to GPU zero. Next, um, uh, GPU one. And then next, since all of the GPUs are not available, third instance, which is with PID 41105, is divided into two GPUs. So in our first approach, we were actually, sorry, uh, we were actually uh, dividing tools between GPUs, which can cause overheads because uh, this GPU can be more uh, memory allocated or being used more. So actually, it's not a very efficient way to allocate it in case of overflow. So what we did was we proposed another um, way to allocate the extra instance of the tool. So what we do is we get the instantaneous memory allocated from the GPUs and we give the GPU which has the least instantaneous memory allocation. So in this case, we execute Raycon and then we execute an instance of Bonito. Uh, so Raycon is in GPU zero and Bonito is in GPU one. So what if we uh, execute another instance? So in the case of this overflow, we uh, allocate GPU zero. Why? Because that was the GPU which has the least memory allocation with 60 megabits for megabytes. So this is our uh, last approach for multi-GPU support. And we believe this is more, uh, this is more, this is a better approach because of the reason that I mentioned. So are there any questions about this? I guess not, so I will continue. So these are just um, command line outputs of those tables. So I wanted to include them uh, to show that they're working as intended. And that's it for our presentation. So if you have any questions, please let us know. And I think we are always welcome to some kind of suggestions or improvements to, you know, some of the uh, implementations we have done. Um, I have one question. Um, somebody has a lot of feedback. Uh, um, how are you going to deal with uh, specialized containers? So the Somebody can, can, I, can you mute? Um, 
So typically what we do is we have these uh, software requirements that say, um, whatever, Bonito, and then uh, we would automatically get the correct image from uh, Docker Hub or KIO. Um, so this would need to be annotated as GPU compatible, assuming that these are not the same containers because you know you need the GPU libraries, uh, whatever, NVIDIA things, specific things. Uh, so how do you see that? And is that something you're going to address? So I'm, I'm, I'm still actually trying to understand your question. So by specialized containers, you mean that they have some uh, very, sp very specific GPU libraries, which are actually being built onto the container image itself or? Yeah, if you want to, I mean, you know this, right? So your Bonito container uh, mm -hmm. probably contains the NVIDIA SMI things and, and mm -hmm. um, so you need to have this specialized container, right? And there's a lot of tools that have a CPU and a GPU mode. And okay. um, all the dependencies that Galaxy uses are in Conda, right? And so you would need a variant of the container that is GPU compatible. Right, because if you're running on CPUs, you don't want to have all that extra library. Um, and yes, yes, I understand. So I think what what we uh, the, the the most simple way of doing it would be to have two different versions of the specialized kind of image. Wherein, yes, if you if you if you do want to run it on a GPU, then we you know want to build the image which will contain the GPU specific libraries and maybe have another version of the image which won't have those packages built in and as long as we have an image probably tag which which says that it, whether it's a gpu compatible tag or a gpu incompatible tag we can use that to actually map in galaxy i believe right so for that for that probably work um how does Galaxy know which one to take? So, uh, I mean, I, I'm going to make use of the container image tags is what I'm saying. So I'm so, so uh, I think the user has to do some kind of an annotation there on the tag saying that these are the two kind of the existing images and uh, which one they would want to use. So based on uh, the, the node availability in the cluster, Galaxy can choose between them, right? I mean, you would need to produce a GPU specific tool then, right? Yes, this... yes, 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 we do, yes. It would be a manual effort, yes, but I think that would be kind of the initial step in doing so. Just to jump in a little bit, Marius, do you think it's better to have two separate app? Like, I guess, what is the, if I'm understanding the problem correctly, it's that if they add the requirement for GPU libraries to the wrapper, it's gonna make the tool always have those? And make the container bigger. So, we and need to have all some... of our dependencies, all our containers are built from Conda packages, right? Uh, yeah. And so, there needs to be an infrastructure change for there to be uh, GPU um, ready containers available, right? I mean, I, I don't know if it's as simple as uh, adding a different base image or, you know, adding another stage. Um, but we would also need a convention in Galaxy for how that would look like. So for instance, this tag that you mentioned, the GPU yeah. tag, like how is that going to look like? We would need to uh, think about how we want to do that and how the community is going to build those containers. Yes, we, we need to change about, the image as you said, yeah. But are we talking about tool specific GPU requirements or are we talking about in general, something to be able to run GPU tools? Because I think those are going to be two separate things. Right? Like something like the NVIDIA drivers or whatever the GPU drivers are needed or binaries to use those drivers, whatever. Those can be uni like uniformly added as the base, like you said. But like in the scenario where there's a specific binary to run this tool with GPU versus CPU or something like that, where it's a specific requirement for this tool to be able to run as with GPU, how do you think that should be handled? Because 
I mean, for me, yeah, I, I don't know how people. common this is. Uh, yeah. If that's a common thing, that's probably something we need to talk with the condo keeper, right? If you want to continue using that as our ecosystem, I mean, for that's a the conversation to need to bring there, because I the, mean, it, it's the same in, in Conda, right? So if you install something in Conda that's supposed to run on GPU and needs additional things, and that needs to be figured out on the Conda level. Yeah, but that would the that would make two separate zappers, right? So there would be one apple mm, i don't know if it's wrapper or uh because you can't is, make two right? because in conda you also have different builds for different arbors for different python versions and so on okay so like something conditional that galaxy can yeah exactly okay. so you know i mean if um if it's going to a gpu route and there's a GPU tag for that container, then we want to take that GPU container, right? So should the mechanism be somewhere in the, where it determines the malt container, something like that? Uh, yes, but that also requires that on the Conda side, there is something that we can use, right? I mean, our, our malt thing is just um, checking which requirements are needed in which versions and building a, a hash out of those requirements. Uh, so it would be easy to say, you know, add a CPU um, specific hash. So the, the third version of the Maltec could be including uh, whether it's CPU or GPU. But those things need to be built. And that's what we want to do that one by one, which I don't think we want to do eventually. Right? As yeah, a start, it's fine. As a start, it's fine, right? Um, For the but, uh, like yeah, driver that's, thing. That's sort of the challenge there. For the driver things, like we do have an operator that's just installing the drivers on each node. Uh, so I think what we need to worry about is like the tool specific things more than yes. cluster specific things. I mean, what is different between the Bonito container and I mean the Bonito GPU and the CPU container? Because I'd assume those drivers doesn't help if they're on the node, they need to be in the container, right? No, it also has to be on to know it as well. So, yeah. I mean, that would be some kind of a redirection between the container image driver and to the actual node driver, so. But, but it will need something like, something to interact with that driver yes. node, yeah. Yeah, I think that would be, uh, that would be, an interesting space to explore and then see how to come up with a much efficient automated way of doing things. Yeah. Oh, and the one more thing I forgot to mention in the talk. So uh, a lot of these implementations which we have done was uh, was based on a lot of feedback and suggestions from actually uh, Beyond. So he has helped us a lot throughout this entire process. So I just want to mention that as well. Any other uh, clarifications or kind of improvements which uh, you would suggest? Put a couple of comments in, in, in the chat. Um, yeah, well, one was along the line what uh, Mario said about uh, uh, if there is Conda support, I think that was explored at, um, at some level, uh, not in Bioconda yet, though, just in uh, uh, Anaconda or Conda Forge, I'm not sure. Uh, and the other is that we, we are kind of trying to give the, the requirements, the Galaxy 2 requirements, as, uh, as general as possible without uh, 
specifying uh, apart from the version of, of the tool that's required. So that, that's kind of one of one of the goals that has also let us move from the previous packaging system that we used to to conda and now to, to singularity uh, docker uh, without having to change the tools so uh, ideally uh, having having being able to to keep this as general as possible it uh, would be good although i understand that in the first stage it's it's probably it's probably tricky mm -hmm. so i think the inherent assumption we have here is that you know the tools which whichever they want to be executed are kind of uh, are kind of like known whether it is going to be running on a CPU or a GPU. So we assume that the container images are actually being built for the specific hardware they want to run on. But I think whatever you were suggesting would be like, I, I, I just have the tool in general and it might have both ways to execute. So we would want to have a generic system which can say that okay this tool does have a gpu capability then i need to probably like pull in or package a gpu container image and then try to run it on a gpu right so that is something we can try to look at yes and also uh, another general question uh, i'm not a gpu expert at all so uh, I've seen that in your example, Raccoon was being able to, to run with just one switch if it was GPU or CPU. Uh, but I think there's possible to have, I, I missed a part in the talk, maybe you already answered that. Uh, depending on which underlying uh, GPU hardware you have, it may need different uh, switches. Uh, so probably just a binary GPU enable or not may not uh, be enough. Yes. So yes, yes, yes. So there, I mean, we do have a pre-compiled executable of Raycon, which is which is for one is for CPU and the other is for GPU, and uh, we have the assumption there that the node we are the node we are going to be like running it in has the necessary packages for that uh, pre-compiled Raycon binary. But that is a scope for improvement, as you said, to know that whether it is going to be compatible or not on the node you're going to be like running it on. Yes. Thanks. I can maybe quickly say something about the Condor status. So Condor Forge um, is building packages against specific CUDA versions. Um, and in theory, um, we can do that on Bioconda as well, but um, most of the packages like TensorFlow and so on um, are existing already for um, GPU usage. The problem here is that you not only need to build against NVIDIA, but against specific CUDA versions. And um, yeah, it will, it will just increase the complexity and we, we really need to annotate um, not only that it's a GPU, but also the kind of the architecture of the GPU or the CUDA version and then pull down specific packages or specific containers. Um, and that might be a problem um, or we, we need to take that into consideration. So we cannot simply assume if it runs on one GPU, it runs everywhere on GPU. Uh, during At least not for all packages. Is um, I mean, how how does that look like when you say build against? Is that at the um, I mean, I've forgotten the terminology, but is that at the build stage or is that just another base image for the Condor package? You mean? Yeah. Um, this is at the build stage, so I think so. I'm I'm really not an expert here, but. I think it's like if you compile against a, a specific libc version, right? You, you need to have this version around. You need to have this CUDA version around. Otherwise, it will not work with the next CUDA version or something like that. That's my understanding currently, um, so which is OK. We because, could, right? It, we it's encoded in the sorry. Conda hash. So, yeah. So that means we could also possibly exchange just the underlying layer. Transplant sort of the um, file system of the container. No, 
know because you your binary is still compiled against this specific Correct. driver version and we cannot control the driver version and like Jamaro figured out um, specific QLA versions only work with specific scheduler versions so this is an entire mess if we talk about nvidia um, the good news is that we have direct contact to NVIDIA and we can actually ask them um, for support. So they, they are eagerly trying to get into the scientific market and they are willing to put engineering effort in this. Um, but in the end, it, 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 it stays closed, um, proper trace software. So we need to deal with that. How is, um, is there any efforts on ARM 60 whatever the new thing is is it arm 64 yes so um corner forge is compiling um, a, a, a subset of packages against arm um, and we have two grants currently open for bioconda to actually support that on the bioconda side as well um, so we have some hardware. We have also an opportunity to access a supercomputer with ARM to compile packages on that. So this looks good, but I think the, the, the larger problem is to actually work with the community to port over C, C++ code actually to ARM architecture. I mean, this is the way bigger problem, I think. Um, but we are most of the packages, I mean, like like Python and so on. So the basic stuff already works on ARM and we could submit to ARM. Um, the really bioinformatic packages, we, we are close to it. We will support it soon, I guess, and in the next year or whatever. Uh, I mean, I'm asking because I, I consider these sort of different problems of the same class, uh, different architectures and different... Yes. Uh, yeah. compute environments and I think whatever solution we come up with should be extensible. Yes. No, same same thinking here. Um, it's 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 also a little bit we, we, I mean we, we also need to discuss this how far we would like to go because essentially it's it's a reproducibility nightmare in the sense of you have one tool but depending on the environment that it's running it's actually producing different results. And we, I mean, one way is to restrict that or the other way is to actually annotate it also to a user in, in, in a way that you cannot rely that this tool is actually producing the same result on usegalaxy.org on EU because whatever, they have different architecture underneath. Um, That's a good point. <clears throat> but I'm not sure where to start this discussion actually. <laughs> I mean, this seems like a good place, but. So maybe we can pull the architecture, um, you know, after the fact, pull out the architecture on which it has been run. Uh, I mean, we should be recording anyway, whatever dependency we used for executing the job. So maybe we need to also pull out architecture and make that sort of a first class job parameter. I mean, we, I mean recording is the one thing and, and I think we, we do that with the metrics plugin, right? But I mean, let's assume we export then a workflow and then the workflow we transfer to a different Galaxy server executed and we have the assumption that it's kind of reproducible. Um, but I don't know if you have an ARM cluster and uh, I mean, I've never tried that, but how different are the results? Are they supposed to be different? I don't know. Whatever. Things that we need to explore. I can add just something that uh, comes to my mind uh, right now. Uh, I think most of the GPU application, the GPU tools, uh, needs to know the, the CUDA capability of the GPU devices also, just to figure out if. Uh, that's the, the, the right GPUs where the, the tools can run on. So I think that the Galaxy should expose to the tool also this information. Just, uh, just an idea.
Yes, I think I kind of agree to what you said that yes, we do need to know the GPU capability of that node for the tool. Yeah. The the CUDA capability, I mean. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. Oh, that's yes. right. Yeah. The CUDA capability. That's right. Should so, that be part of the scheduler? I mean, in the ideal world. Uh, I think uh, just before this scheduler, there would be another component to check this uh, configuration compatibility or configuration management. So we, I mean, in the in the in the in the, in the cloud computing world, we typically have tools which try to do that even before going to the scheduler. But I'm not sure how that happens in uh, the Galaxy setting. So, it's so like, it work, can you read how does it work in setting? I mean, you, you want to submit a tool and the tool checks the node manually? No. no, no, no. The tool, I don't think it would check, but we do, we do, we do have some kind of external softwares which we can use to check the configuration compatibility between the node and the tool. I don't, know how you can use I don't know about other runners, but in Kubernetes, you can just specify resource requests, GPU, same as you specify requests for memory or for CPU, and then it just lead out the job to whatever node can fulfill mm -hmm. that. Which so is what Kubernetes. the scheduler does in HPC, right? So you, you don't, you know, you, you don't ask what is available. You just say, I need this. Yes, that's right. I think in Slurm or anything like that, we can do that. Nicola, I think I interrupted you, sorry. No, yeah, well, similar point. I think we need to, to find a way to match the expectation of, of the tool with what's available as resources in the cluster, GPU, whatever. So uh, right, right now there is always the, the middleman, which is the admin that uh, decides, uh, okay, this tool will uh, use eight cores because uh, otherwise it, uh, it's too slow or uh, this tool needs to go to this queue because it needs this amount of memory. Uh, but if, if we need to do that also for uh, all the possible combinations of, of uh, CUDA capabilities, whatever, uh, it becomes a more an issue for, for uh, another issue for, for the admin to find, uh, find out which is the, the right queue for the for each tool. I think uh, that, it, um, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, so I think we also discussed having expressions uh, within uh, requirements so that you could say, you know, um, based on the input, give that much CPU memory and so on. So I think uh, we could try to, go that route, or we could do um, what people in, so if you look at NF Core, um, the uh, next flow sort of community thing, uh, they distribute files that specify resources required for workflow runs. So maybe we could get inspired uh, in that direction and start assembling sort of um, files that specify for a given environment, what are the resources that should be allocated and that are reusable um, by different places, right? So if you look, there's, for instance, different HPC centers that just submit their definition of what should be available uh, to a given uh, workflow. So I think that's maybe something to investigate because it seems like that's more flexible than embedding the expression directly within the tool. So what, what, what we are trying, but we need to have solid matrices on that. So um, we would like to take our database and the matrices that we have collected during the years for all tool runs and, and create a model. So a machine learning model out of that so that we actually can predict it a priori. And, the, and in the India case, the admin doesn't need to do that anymore. So. Our idea is to have a web service where you submit the, the tool ID um, and you get configuration options that we know that have already succeeded in one of these Galaxy servers or in other environments. 
and you give and you get back kind of a CPU memory GPU requirement um, back for your tool ID. Um, so we are looking currently at in this direction. So um, maybe someone wants to help you. The, the problem that we are currently facing is that the matrices that we get back from C groups were not super reliable on our old cluster. Um, so wouldn't it make more, or I mean, like an advantage if we did um, sort of a, a, a bit more of a more manual process that when the resources are that are available are different, you can sort of choose and specify your own things instead of assuming that historical data are from a database that you know it's, it's sort of close because it's only it's only only you that you have this data but i mean you know if you would create a repository of resources that seems like something that is a bit more open and friendlier and i mean that's, I mean, that's the idea right we we collect um with whatever the galactic radio telescope we collect all the matrices and we and we just do and we create models out of that. So it will in the end be a, a giant database if you think about that with a nice API that you can request to get this EDL configuration. I mean, currently we do that with sorting head and, and Nate has also a YAML file somewhere around where we do a best guess. And this best guess should just be automatized and based on real proper and, and back up by real proper data from our database. That's just our thinking. Um, but of course, if you can collect matrices from these tools, um, you can provide them. All right, guys, it is one. We are out of time. Um, I encourage you to continue that conversation. There is a pull request. And I just wanted to thank um, Golsum and Josh for their presentation. Thank you for coming to the round table today. Yeah, thank thanks you. a lot. Thank you for thank giving you. the opportunity. Thank you. It was our pleasure. Yeah.